I'm up. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. A friend of mine shared with me yesterday evening a statement. He said, I have some really good news for you. God has a crazy love for you, and he knows your name. And I want you to know he knows where you are, and he's looking for people who will worship him in spirit and truth, and I know you've come to do that tonight. I have a few assignments before we get back into the time of worship. First of all, I just want to say thank you to a few folks. A lot of preparation and planning have gone in tonight, and so Adam Lott from First Baptist and Sean Bracken from Westwood and Jason Scott from Mount Olive have done a tremendous job. We've had a great deal of help from Ryan Burley uh, at Westwood, and Christy has always done what she does to make things work, so please give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to take care of a little business before I forget. It's not on my notes, but the boys' bathrooms are over here. And the girls' bathrooms are over here, okay? So boys, stay this side. In the back, you'll see a booth for uh, good news to onebyone.org, which is a free tract ministry. Brother Ronnie Gore a, participates with Welburn Baptist Church and his brother's church in Jacksonville. He's got dual membership, I think. But these are free, and he came to share with us tonight. So be sure and go by there sometime at the end of the message and the singing, uh, and feel free to help yourself and talk to them. And finally, I want to give you just a minute to say, hello, how are you, we love you, by some of the folks sitting around close to you. Take just a minute to connect with some friends you maybe haven't seen in a while. You can get up, but don't go too far because we're not going to take long. Say hello, say we love you, share something good about what God has done. Father God, I want to thank you for this evening. Thank you for your great love for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can celebrate your name together. Lord, we know in many places in the world, uh, this is done in secret. That the body gathers together in a cave, or out in the woods, or a forest, and they sing your praise. And what a sweet, aroma that is to you. And Father, we pray tonight that this will be a sweet aroma to you as well. You are our audience. And we lift our voices in praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west we'd hear Christ be magnified
Yes, I'll stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice because you're there too. I won't be born by feelings. I'll hold fast to what is true. And if the cross brings transformation, then I'll be crucified with you. so glad you came here, got to hear us worship, but now we want you to participate with us. Why don't we stand as we worship together? Come on, let's sing out to the Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, when I Hey. 
Heavenly Father, God, tonight as we are in this place, I pray that it is about you and you only, Jesus. You are great and great to be praised, and I pray that tonight the name of Jesus is the only thing that is exalted and lifted up in this place. Because, Jesus, you give us the very bread that we have, God. And, God, as we come, you deserve all our praise. May we lift it up to you today in heart, in spirit, and in truth to the one who's worthy.
Let's direct our attention to God's Word. Psalm chapter 62. My soul waits in silent for God only. From Him is my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail me, a man, that you may murder him, all of you, like a leaning wall, like a tottering fence? They have counseled only to thrust him down from his high position. They delight in falsehood. They bless with their mouth, but inwardly they curse. My soul, wait in silence for God alone. For my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be shaken. On God my salvation and my glory rest. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Men of low degree are only vanity, and men of rank are a lie. In the balance they go up. They are together lighter than breath. Do not trust in oppression and do not vainly hope in robbery. If riches increased, do not set your heart upon them. Once God has spoken. Twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God. And love kindness is yours, O Lord, for you recompense a man according to his works. And then we read in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears the word, these words of mine and act on them may be compared to a wise man who has built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and yet it did not fall. For it has been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. When Jesus had finished these words, the crowd, they were amazed at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one having authority and not as their scribes. This is the word of God.
My name is Andrea Lowry. I was born in 1963 in Connecticut by Charles and Helga McCrane. In April 1975, my mother abducted me to Denmark. She reconnected with her former fiance who asked her to move back over to Denmark. I graduated the German private school and went to a German college in Denmark. After that, I was taking my prerequisites for engineering school. When one afternoon in October of 1985, my mother came to my dorm and informed me that my father had committed suicide during Hurricane Gloria back in Connecticut. I also need to mention that when I was at the ages of 9, 12, 16, and 22, and 53, my mother tried to commit suicide. In November of 2015, I met my husband Frank at the dog park in Norwich, Connecticut. In January 2016, shortly after we met, I had a head-on car collision where a man who was intoxicated four times over the legal limit came into my lane while I was driving home from work. Unfortunately, he passed away from his injuries and I came away with 22 broken bones. On this evening, I was to have dinner with my daughter who was going to tell me that she was pregnant with our first grandchild. After eight surgeries and extensive rehabilitation, I was able to move on with my life and ask my then boyfriend, Frank, who now is my husband, if he would marry me. We started going to Tiger Lake Baptist Church with Pastor Melvin Owen, who was preaching. After eight weeks of hearing Pastor Owen preaching, I realized that I was not saved. One Sunday after the church service, Frank said, hop in but I stood there feeling hopeless and I was crying that I needed to speak to Pastor Owen because I realized I am not saved. So that day I gave my life to the Lord. God gave me another chance to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If you read Ephesians chapter two, verses eight and nine, it says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hello to one and all. My name is Byron Frank Lowry. I was born in Key West, Florida. Uh, I lived in Key West until the age of about five and a half, six. But during that time, I lied, I stole, I even started a fire in the house. I had run away from the home. At the age of 17, I finally made a choice. My father had moved to Bedford, Massachusetts, and I decided to leave Florida and join him, and, and hopefully for a change of life. But my sinful nature came with me, something you cannot get away from. In Bedford, Massachusetts, I proceeded to continue a life of crime, arson, vandalism, uh, to the point where I ended up uh, buying a car, a 70 GTO convertible. It took three of my friends for a joyride. We ended up in a horrific accident where I was doing 130 miles an hour, skidded a long ways before hitting a tree, a telephone pole, and another tree and stopped. The car's frame was snapped in four places. The only thing that was recognizable in the car was the trunk lid and we all walked away. And finally, a young man named Victor Irizarry, I'll never forget him, Victor Irizarry invited me to go to a church meeting that they were having at his church where a man was gonna be preaching. And I was drawn, that's all I can say, I was drawn. And I went that evening and I heard a man speaking about a, a Jesus Christ who had given his life for me and he went to the cross and would have done it, if not for me alone, but he did it for all of mankind. Amen. And that night, when the words I heard, John 3, 16, we all know it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him shall have everlasting life. And I ran to the altar. I kneeled down, I raised my hands in surrender, I give. I ended up receiving the Lord that night and uh, went home and my life was changed. But for a time, the pride of life, 
the pride, the pride of flesh. And all of that drew me back in. And I continued for a time drinking excessively uh, due to alcohol. And finally passed out at home at the dinner table. Uh, I had gone into a deep, deep uh, drinking binge and to the point where I had alcohol poisoning and I was laying in bed and I knew I was dying. I knew this was it. The Lord moved upon my heart when I did as the scripture says. I, he stands at the door and he knocks and there's only one doorknob and it's on our side. And I opened that door and he came in and he supped with me. And I experienced something I had never experienced before. The peace that passes all understanding, all my pitfalls, all everything that I had done just fell by the wayside. And I felt this renewing and experienced a renewing in my life to where I was able to be a true husband to my wife and a father to my son. And with that, I would just say, praise God. And we're here to praise him tonight. And let's give him the worship. He is the great I am, the living God. Thank you, folks. Be blessed.
was good. Don't you think it was good, amen? I thought it was good, amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Let's pray together. Father, tonight we are grateful to be in this place. We're grateful, Father, that we can come together to worship you in truth and in spirit. God, we're grateful for those who've labored and prayed and prepared, Father. We're grateful tonight, dear God, for the message and song and for the music, for the fellowship that we enjoy. We're grateful tonight, God, for your presence in this place. For Lord, tonight we have come to lift up and magnify your holy name. We've come to call upon you. We've come to trust in you, Father, and ask you, dear God, that you'll do a work that will honor and glorify your name in this place. Sweet Spirit of God, you are welcome in our hearts and our lives. You're welcome in this place to minister grace and peace and love and power and salvation among your people. Thank you, Father, for who you are, all that you do. Lord, we confess tonight, God, that we love you because you loved us first. Gave your son to die in our place to pay the price for our sin. Tonight we're grateful that we can call ourselves children of the living God. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, and we love you. We praise you, and we thank you, Father. And God, we ask now, dear God, to continue to bless as we continue to worship. Pour out upon us of your spirit, we pray. God, I pray for Andy as he comes to speak to us in a little while, Father. Thank you for the choir tonight, God. Thank you for the congregation. Thank you for every person here tonight, Lord. Thank you for your presence, for your love, for your grace. Father, you are good and kind and tender and forgiving and faithful. And Lord, we're your children. We just want to say we love you. We praise you. We thank you, Father. Now, God, I pray that you'll do a wonderful work in this service that we'll leave here in a little while rejoicing, refreshed, revived, God. Lord, we're a needy people. We need you, Lord, to work in us. Father, this world needs you. God, we look around us and we see all the things happening, Father, and we know that you're our only hope, God. Lord, do the work that needs to be done. And thank you, Father, for all that you are doing and going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Amen. Well, you know, Jesus said in John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remain in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Let's stand together as we sing our dependency on the Lord tonight. Lord, we need you. Lord, I come, I confess, now we hear.
For Jesus, you're my hope and stay. i 
After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. Around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. And around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders, clothed in white garments, with golden crowns on their head. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and before the throne were seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, a, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, worthy are you, our Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor, and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures, and among the elders I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain, with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the one that was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed the people for God 
from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped.
message, but I feel like we need to be right here, right now. Pray. Father God, I thank you for this evening. And Lord God, all that we've done tonight is in honor and glory of your name. You've spoken your word to us. Your spirit inhabits the praises of your people. And you're here with us now. So Father God, I ask that you move in a way tonight in a fresh new way in our hearts and our lives. Restore us. Heal the brokenness in our lives. Make us bold with the gospel. Help us to love the ones that we've refused to love in the past. To love one another. To bring honor to your name every day. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You've heard the testimony of so many. You've heard the testimony of the psalmist and the apostle John. As the scripture's been read, you've been hearing, hearing the testimony and song and you've participated in it all night. And it's been wonderful. But you know, for those of us who know Christ as our Savior and Lord, you just need to remember that when we come out of this skin, this will not compare to what we will experience in heaven, in our real home. Because we're just tenants here, and we know that. You've heard the testimony of Frank and Andrea Lowry, and how God reached into their lives and brought them out of some very difficult and dark places. You heard Frank's testimony and how trouble surrounded him, brought much of it on himself, and that God stepped into his life and redeemed and saved him. And that's what our Lord does. As a matter of fact, the scripture tells us, and Jesus said it himself, by spirit and truth, we come to Christ. We come to a relationship with God. And I've thought about this some. You know, Frank's story and testimony is very much different from mine, but in some ways exactly the same. It's different that I didn't have that hard life. I had a different type of life. I grew up in the church. I was baptized at an early age, but I didn't know what that really meant. I was a good kid. I never did some of the things Frank did. But I've come to the conclusion that God, if there can be a difference, that for God to save someone like me, because I was trying to live a works-based religion in order to be right with God, that was really built on pride and ego and self-righteousness, that my sin would be in some way worse than Frank's. I didn't steal or burn anything down or wreck a car like that. But everything else, I had that same nature in me. And Christ gave me a new life, just like he did Frank. I had a works-based religion, but one day, I discovered that what Jesus really wanted was a faith-based relationship. I'm gonna ask you to just listen to some scripture from John chapter four because it tells the story of a woman that Jesus met one day at a well. And you know this story if you've ever been in Sunday school or vacation Bible school for very long. You know the story of the woman who lived in Samaria, a town of Sychar, in Samaria and Jesus and his disciples had to go from Judea back up to Galilee and they had to cross through Samaria. And the disciples, like all good Jewish men, said, well, we don't go through that territory, we go around it. And the scripture tells us that Jesus told his disciples, I must go through Samaria because he had an appointment with this woman. And it makes me stop for just a second and realize that many of us maybe came tonight to hear the music, to experience this event, 
But Jesus has shown up and he wants to do business with you. He wants to deal with you and deal with the brokenness in your own heart and your own life. You may be like this woman who had so much of a wrecked life that when she began to have this conversation with Jesus and it got into the, the, the meat of the discussion and he asked her to go and call her husband and she said, I don't have one, that she finally had to admit that her life was broken because she only had been married six times and the one she was with at that moment wasn't even her husband. So she was coming to this well, this space, in her world outside this village to get water in the heat of the day because no one accepted her anymore because she was an outcast in her, in her family. She was an outcast in her community. She was an outcast among the women in her village. And Jesus sat down at that well, tired and thirsty, and asked her for a drink. And he says these things to her. This woman came from Samaria to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone away into the city to buy food and the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you a Jew ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? And Jesus answered her and he said, if you knew the gift of God, who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. You see, Jesus is looking for the outcast and he connects with the hopeless and he loves the brokenhearted. And we've all been there at some point in time. And maybe you're there right now. Maybe you are like I was and you were trying to make yourself right with God by the things that you did in an attempt to please him. But you can't do that because that water pot will always be empty and you never can fill it up. He goes on to have this discussion. She says to him, sir, if you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep, where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? She had a religious background. She had a heritage there and he gave us the well and drank from it himself as did his sons and his livestock. It's really interesting to me that she asked him that question, are you greater than our father Jacob? <laughs> well, yeah, just a little bit, <laughs> right? You see, sometimes we don't even know the truth staring us in the face and we don't realize it because we're in darkness. Well, he goes on to say to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. You see, what does happen in our lives when we come to Christ as our Savior and our Lord is not just that we have this home in heaven, but we have a new life here today. And you heard that story from Frank and Andrew, and you've seen it in other people's lives. And there's this place that we're walking right now, but it's not ours, but we have this new life today, and that's what makes a difference. That's why when tragedy comes into our lives, when brokenness happens, we still have hope. And this woman had come to this well without hope. So she said, well, sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty again and come here to draw water. She had been tired of doing that, and of course that's when he said, why don't you bring your husband here and let's have a conversation. And then she tried to change the subject. And she said to him, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. That wouldn't be too difficult. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you say in Jerusalem is a place where people ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming. And as neither when on this mountain nor in Jerusalem, Will you worship the Father? You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews, but the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers 
will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. Isn't it a wonderful thing to realize? Although we can't get there by ourselves, we're blind, we can't find the way. The woman is a great example. That she was looking for something, but she didn't know what it was. And she kept going back to the same place every day to try to refill that water pot. But one day, Jesus showed up at the well. And Jesus sat down and engaged in a conversation with her. You know, maybe in today what we would have said is he might have said something like this. Hey, guess what? I've got some great news for you. God has this crazy love for you, and he knows where you are, and he knows your name, and he knows your hurt, and he knows your brokenness. And so Jesus that not only engaged with her, but then he begins to show her the way. And she says this question to him. He says, look, the woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. Can you see her begin to turn in her heart and mind. She's aware something's happening. And Jesus says these words to her, I who speak to you am he. Let me tell you what. Jesus Christ, the risen Son of God, gives abundant and eternal life to all who will trust him and follow. Jesus gives eternal life and abundant life to all who will put down their water pots and trust Him. That's all we have to do. You wonder about a decision that people make and whether a person, when they come to Christ, is it a sinner's prayer that they pray? But I just point out to you this, that what this woman did was rejoiced. She left her pot there where it was after having that conversation with Christ. She realized that the Son of God has stepped into her lives, even though maybe she still didn't understand it all. And she ran back rejoicing to tell her friends and family about what she had just experienced. And she said, could this be the Christ? He told me everything about myself. And what was once a shame and a scorn to her, before she got there now, it didn't matter anymore because she had been forgiven and set free from her guilt and her shame because the Son of God had said, come to me, I want to love you. I want you to be with me. Tonight as we finish with this next song, as God has spoken to your heart and your soul, we're asking and inviting you to go back to the, the track booth and some pastors will be there to counsel and pray with you after this is over. Father God, I thank you for this day and this evening. Thank you for my brothers and sisters and their friends who've come together tonight to worship and celebrate who you are. Father, thank you for receiving our praise. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
on, sing that with us. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Mind you, that is who Jesus Christ is. If you're here tonight and you don't know who that way maker, that miracle worker is, don't forget, back there to my right in the back, someone would love to talk to you tonight. Talk to you what it means not to have a religion, not to have a lot of head knowledge, but to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So make your way back there. We'd love to have you. Thank you guys for being here with us and worshiping with us tonight. We pray it's been a blessing. Y'all go and have a great night.